What's up guys, it's Westin here. So today I'm going to be reviewing the MSI Aegis 3 pre-built gaming system. Now, I'm going to be going over a few things in this video. I'm going to be going over the specifications, all around the system, some benchmarks, some temperatures, and all that good stuff. So if you want to see if this system is any good, then stay tuned. Also, we're going to be talking if pre-built are worth it as a whole. So anyway, let's get into the review right now. The model I have here is the i7-7700 which is clocked at 3.6 GHz and turbos to 4.2. This is air cooled via a custom cooler designed for the Aegis 3. You've got an MSI B250 custom made motherboard. It comes with 16 GB of sodium DDR4 clocked at 2400 MHz but it is expandable up to 32 GB. You've got an MSI GTX 1070 Gaming, which is an 8 gig graphics card with a minimum clock speed of 1506 MHz and a boost of 1721. The memory clock on this card is 8008 MHz. In this system, you also get an M.2 SSD drive, which is your boot drive. This is 256 gigabyte capacitor, and the speeds are pretty impressive too. You get 558 on the read and 323.8 on the write. You can also add a second M.2 if you remove the side panel, but we're on that later on. Secondary storage, you get a two terabyte hard drive, which is 7200 RPM and has some pretty impressive speeds too. So it's got 206.4 meg on read and 174.1 on write. So it's quick and fast and plenty big enough for a big game library. You've also got Bluetooth 4.1 built in, built in Wi-Fi, which is Intel dual band AC 1368. You've also got Windows 10 Home Edition too. Now this is all powered by a bronze rated 450 watt power supply, which unfortunately is non upgradable. Also with this system, you do get a bundled keyboard and mouse, which is the DS4200 and the DSB mouse. Now we'll be covering that in a separate video, which will be linked in the description when it's live. You also get a utility disc, some spare screws and fixings, a HDMI cable, some documentation and your power cable. So now let's talk about how this system looks and everything else about it. And I love it, it's aggressive, it's full of angular components, cutouts, which definitely let you know its intention as a rig for gamers. So starting at the front first, you're greeted with an armor-like appearance which has some awesome carbon fiber accents, which I do really like. The openings are large enough for some decent airflow, which again, I will discuss later on in the video. These cutouts also allow the RGB to shine through the front as the Aegis supports Mystic Lighting. Now this you can control with the MSI Gaming Center but I'll cover that later on in the video. At the bottom you have an HDMI port which is carefully placed for VR gaming. It's really easy to access but it's not too obtrusive. The front IO is as follows. On the left hand side you've got a USB Type-C, you also get a USB 2.0 with supercharge which charges your phone faster but it does need enabling in the software suite. You also get a second USB 2.0 and I think a USB 3 would have been better here. The right side features a mic port, a headphone jack and your power switch. Right at the top of the Aegis 3 you've got an illuminated MSI badge which looks very nice and then finally above that you've got a secret little hideaway DVD drive. The top of the case follows the same ethos as the front with some really angular design. Again these are cutouts for improved airflow. Now this top section is removable by some screws at the back and you can add an additional 2.5 inch SSD or HDD for extra storage. It also has a convenient handle built into it which is nicely implemented and makes transportation super easy. Speaking of transportation, the Aegis weighs in at 8 kilograms and measures in at 170 by 376 by 433 millimeters. So it is a fairly compact system. On the right hand side of the Aegis you get a convenient headphone hanger which is very useful and looks pretty cool too. I also like that when it's not in use you can simply fold it away and it fits in with the rest of the design. You also have a small tinted window which you can see part of the interior. Now you remove this side panel again via some rear mounted screws and then you have access to upgrade the RAM to 32GB. You can also add a further M.2 SSD to the system here. Now this would be ideal for you content creators out there that want some faster read and write speeds. Now we get on to the back where we've got your rear IO. Now on here we've got two USB 2.0, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A, one HDMI out, one HDMI in for VR, one display port, five OFC audio jacks, one SPDIF, one RJ45 LAN port and one PS2 port. 
Then on the GTX 1070, you have a further three DisplayPort 1.4, one HDMI 2.0 and one DVI-D. So there are plenty of ports for all your peripherals and even for a multi-monitor setup, which this system is more than capable of doing. So moving around onto the right hand side, you can see we have a vented cutout for the 1070 to breathe. Now I would like to have seen the bottom portion of this vented too, because it is covered up by some perspex. Now there's probably a reason why they've done this, but I think it would have improved airflow to the 107 air and possibly had a better effect on cooling but again more on that later also on here we have a second headphone hanger all in all i'm really liking the aggressive sharp edged aesthetic of the ages yes it might not be for everyone but i think it looks great so now let's talk about all the extra features that come bundled with the ages so like i've said already you get mystic light which illuminates the front section and also the side window of the ages where the 1070 is located this is customizable by the gaming center which comes on the disc that you get bundled with it now here you can turn off the lights if you don't like it at all you can have a static color to match your setup you can have a gradient color which cycles through all the different colors in the spectrum you then have audio which reacts to your music so if you're listening to some tunes it'll sort of dance along with them as well and then finally you've got this sort of breathing effect but that's not all that this gaming center can do on here you control your visual effects which have some preset options some of which you can personalize to your own taste you then have options for Namic Audio, which again boosts your audio and is really impressive. Some of the best audio I've ever experienced from a built-in motherboard. Really impressive. Then you've got your utility options, which include Dragon Eye, the gaming app, a mouse controller, and controls over hotkeys. You then have Cinemax, which adjusts the color temperature of your display. So if you don't want to mess about with the display controls on your display, then you can just do it via the app, which is pretty awesome. You then can also control your device settings so you can control your system volume, your mic volume, and you can also switch off your Wi-Fi and access quick charge on the front port. Then finally, you have a system monitor, and on here you can keep an eye on various components of your system, such as Wi-Fi speed, temperatures, and all that good stuff can be monitored there, which I think is pretty awesome. So now we've got all that out of the way, let's talk performance. In general, everyday performance is fine. No issues with it whatsoever. With the N2 SSD, the i7, 16 gig of RAM, GTX 1070, day-to-day -day performance is a breeze. No complaints at all. Now we get on to video editing and I edit a lot of 4K footage and this handled it like a dream. It was brilliant. Now coming from an i5-6600K, I noticed the difference was night and day. I could edit much quicker, it was much smoother and the experience as a whole was just better. So if you're a content creator that works in 1080p or in 4K, then you're going to have no issues with this system whatsoever. It is really impressive for video editing. Now we get on to gaming performance and it was a mixed bag. I was having some really great times on some games and not so great on others. Now the games that played well were like Shadow of Mordor, I could play that max settings 4040p, no issues whatsoever. But then some games I had issues with, one of those being GTA 5, the other Batman Arkham Knight and finally Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now I did notice that sometimes I was getting frame drops to around 50 frames per second and it was struggling sometimes to maintain a 60 FPS to keep in line with V-Sync. Now this was all at the highest possible settings on these games so turning them down a little bit did help maintain that 60 FPS. Now I was expecting to hit in 60 across the board max settings with the i7 and GTX 1070. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm thinking that's not happening and one of those things is when I got this system to review, there was a lot of stuff already on the system. Now because I had limited time with the AGS, I couldn't do a fresh install and start again. So maybe that was the cause of the problem. So maybe there was something going on there with the software that was pre-installed that shouldn't have been there. So that could have been an issue. So your experience will probably be different to mine. So now we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at all those benchmark scores.
Right guys, so now you've seen the benchmarks, let's talk the final point about this system and that is temperatures. Now idle temps were quite impressive. We got 32 degrees on the CPU and 31 on the GPU, so no complaints whatsoever. My room temperature is around about 20-ish degrees, so not that big a difference. So yeah, idle temps, no problems whatsoever. Now we get onto low temperatures and we saw a max load on the GPU of 64 degrees, which is pretty impressive. I was expecting a little bit hotter actually, but it was well cooled. The issue I have is with the high temperatures that I saw on the CPU. Now this was, was gaming at 1440p high settings and I hit a peak of 81 degrees C, which is not that good. I mean, I know KBLX do run a little bit hot, but I wasn't liking that. I usually like to see temperatures in the low 70s, high 60s at maximum. But yeah, 81 degrees C isn't that great to be honest. And maybe there was a little bit of thermal throttling occurring in some games. Now guys, let's wrap this review up. So should you actually pick one of these Ages 3s up? Well, it's going to cost around $1,600 US and around £1,600 UK when it comes out. Now you can get the i5 model already, which I will link in the description. So if you don't want to get the i7, then you can get the i5 right now. So should you actually pick one of these up? Well, I would say that depends. Now, if you're one of those people that loves gaming but doesn't want to build their own PC, then having a system that's done for you with some great additional features is definitely a win. Now, it also comes with XSplit, a 12-month membership, which costs around £60, which I didn't mention earlier on in the review. You also get a 60-day free trial with Norton as well. So yeah, it does come with a lot of stuff and I think it is great value for money if you add also the keyboard and mouse that you get bundled with it as well. So it is great value for money, it performs well. I did have some issues with temperatures and gaming, but again, that could be software related, which I had no control over from the last person that reviewed it. But yeah, overall, it is a fantastic system and I think you should definitely consider it if you're into gaming, but don't want to build your own PC. Now, let's answer the question I asked at the beginning of this video, and are pre-built worth it? I would say yes, but only for the right person, and like I've said, that's the person that loves gaming but doesn't want to build their own PC. And there you have it guys, that is pretty much it for this one. I know it's been a long one, but we've had so much information and a lot to cover. So thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this some more PC stuff coming and loads of other great content too. So thanks again for watching guys and I will see you all on the very next video.